Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Peoples, president of Advanced Marketplace. Appreciate you taking the time today to join us as we show you our human resources demonstration of our uh, HR service management solution we built on the ShareWell platform. The agenda today is introductions. Again, you hear me host these all the time. Again, I'm Matthew Peoples, president of the company. I've got Mary Lynn Lawrence with me today, and Mary Lynn's going to give us a high-level overview of the solution that we built and then walk through a demonstration of the product. And if you really think about uh, the solution we're going to show you today, it's broken into two separate pieces. It's focused on the onboarding process, is which we'll start and spend most of our time showing you how you can onboard and, uh, a new employee. And then we'll move into more of a case management mode of employees that are existing in the company and they have service requests that have to be handled. If you've got any questions like we normally do on these calls, you can uh, point those questions directly to me in the chat window in the bottom left-hand corner. I will queue up those questions and bring them up to Mary Lynn at, uh, throughout the presentation, but also at the very end we'll have a, a Q&A session. If for some reason you've got a question and you don't want to post it in the group, uh, we get those all the time, feel free to email them at consulting at ampemail.com, and we'll be happy to uh, answer those to you as well. Mary Lynn, are you there? I am here. Excellent. So go ahead. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's start. We have a couple of PowerPoints to go through, and the reason I want to do this before we get into the demo is there are a lot of different moving pieces to this. And a lot of times we break this demo into two pieces where we're doing the onboarding side and the case management side, but we're going to try to cover the high points of all of those. And, and the really nice thing about the, the solution that we we're providing here that we're showing you is that we've used um, some of the components that ShareWell has already provided uh, in their MAP exchange, um, and then just uh, configured the incident module around case management, um, and, and put uh, something we're really good at, which is our own portal design on top of it. So we're going to hit two different areas. We're going to go through um, case management and the new hire process. Uh, and I want to just tell you briefly about the components you're going to see. We're going to wing through these um, PowerPoints pretty quickly, though, and get right into the demo. So the system components that we're using for the new hire uh, are two uh, M apps that you can download anytime you want from ShareWell, the job tracking and the candidate tracking um, modules. Now, we've modified the candidate tracking module to have um, checklists that are specific to HR, and these checklists have been configured such that they are modifiable by the end user, um, the end user HR manager. And then service requests, of course, for new hire, and then the portal. Job tracking is something that's been overlooked by a lot of people. It's just been out there for a while, and, and some people uh, really like it. Others you do job tracking in their own way. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the job tracker component, but just know that this is out there and available to track jobs from when they become new and, and just a, a, a thought in a hiring manager's mind through being offered, filled, and closed as functions for HR. There is also a candidate tracker. You can see uh, by the, the PowerPoint here all of this, the different phases it can go through. We're definitely not going to spend a lot of time here, but what's really nice is there is, a, is a, a very structured way that makes a lot of sense to be able to track candidates. Now, everything we talk about today um, can be used or not used as part of the solution. So we have a lot of customers that already have systems like Kronos, Workday, or other HR systems that are handling a lot of the candidate and job tracking functions. And so at that point, we can integrate with those systems. For other customers, this is a really easy way to start tracking your jobs and candidates. And in the demo today, we're going to be launching from a candidate who has an offer for a specific job and launching it into the HR service request side. What's unique about the uh, flow that you're going to see today, uh, and this is a big conversation that we have with customers, where does a new hire request originate? 
Is it from the hiring manager? Is it from HR? And in our experience this past year with a couple of customers that are both IT and HR, it seems to be a hybrid. So uh, generally, HR manages the hiring process but HR does not know the specific details about what that candidate needs. That's the hiring manager. And so the solution we put together has an HR initiation with an IT input as part of it. So as you can see from these swim lanes, we have the job and the candidate in the HR swim lane. The HR group is also um, populating some checklists that they have to have. Um, some pro and some professional development areas. Our experience with um, HR in some companies is that these things are just kept in multiple places um, and they're important and they really do appreciate having them as part of the ShareWell tool. Once a person is hired, then it drops into what many people who are already using ShareWell are familiar with, the service request process flow. In this case, HR initiated it and there are, as an example here, three different tasks that are generated. There's an HR task, professional development, and an operations task. And they just are to represent some of the multi-discipline areas that have to be involved in a, an onboarding process. But you notice that there aren't any H IT tasks here until we go through a supervisor process. So once the new hire request is initiated, the, the supervisor, uh, the new hire supervisor receives an email, goes into the portal, and fills out the remaining portion of the new hire checklist that yeah, you may be familiar with from the onboarding one out of box. And at that point, the IT tasks are then generated. So um, it, it's a flow that includes both HR and IT. From the case management side, we have modified and configured the uh, incident object to also manage cases. And so as you can imagine, the different forms and fields that are shown there are different, but we liked keeping it as an incident object rather than another new object because um, in, in an enterprise service management implementation, HR and IT tickets are often exchanged and it makes a security, the security a lot easier. And we can talk in more detail about the underlying structure of this at some point. So the two pieces of the case management that we'll see uh, are the case management, which is the IT object modified to be uh, HR, and then again the portal. And when we talk about the portal piece of case management, it's built so that it can provide um, knowledge and information that's specific to HR requests. So uh, instead of like an IT service portal where most of the time it's I want to order or I have an issue, the HR cases are things where they need to be, uh, the end user needs to be presented with valuable information at their fingertips, either launching them to uh, sites, benefit sites, or providing specific benefit documents. And hopefully we have time to cover that um, at the end. Uh, as, as any of you who have worked with us know, we are really, really excellent at portal design. We'll be showing you one of our portal designs for the enterprise service management area today, but this is just a sample of the different types of designs that we can do. Uh, ShareWell portal design is just configuration. Uh, everyone should do this because it does not take a web designer. It uses the dashboards and the tools um, in the tool. For case management, you're going to see that it's called an HR case, but it looks an awful lot like an incident. Um, so uh, it, it has a familiar look and feel, but capturing only the critical information. Within the case, it's some of the common things that you would know that go along with incident management. Um, but we also have uh, a, an understanding that printing is important for our HR consultants or our companies. And so we have print forms that are available already set up as well. Oh, that's it, perfect. So let's go into the demo. So lots of different um, components here. Uh, let's see, share, desktop two. Marilyn, while you're getting that ready to show the demonstration, I do have a couple of questions I want to bring up to you uh, while we're talking about this. So one of the questions came in uh, when you talked about 
the difference in uh, work case management and um, employee onboarding. The question came in pretty quick is if they're already using an existing system, so we've got uh, two people have asked about Taleo, uh, they're using that already for their candidate management system. If they don't need that functionality but they really need another piece of what this HR uh, solution can deliver, mm -hmm. do they have to use everything in it or can they turn off the pieces that they were using for somewhere else? Yeah, they can absolutely not use the components. And I'll show you when we do the demo here for the new hire that basically you would ignore the job and candidate area and we would just generate the new hire request. So we're, we're totally familiar with the Taleo side of it too. I should have brought that up already. Um, but the, the job piece and the candidate piece are optional pieces for sure. They're free and they're in the system but they uh, do not have to be used in order to um, take advantage of the new hire functionality. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Okay. A anyone else? If you've got questions, bottom left-hand corner uh, in the chat window, I know we've still got people joining the webinar today. Uh, you can ask your questions, direct those to Matthew people specifically. I'll queue those up and ask Mary Lynn as we go through the presentation. Thank you, Mary Lynn. Okay. So, um, I'm taking you into a tech or in the technician view as an HR um, technician, an HR service desk person. And so uh, our dashboard is a My Work dashboard that um, has the My Work by cases. You can see the different case types that are coming in are very specific to HR. Um, when we go in, and I'll just take you quickly into a case just to show you. Um, what it looks like. We're not going to spend much time in, in a case at all because if you're familiar with incident, you're familiar with a case. But we're capturing all of the information that would have come in from the portal or on the phone. We have uh, a catalog behind here with the different HR uh, categories and subcategories as well. Um, we, are we have a follow-up piece uh, part of this so that you can put this um, out to actually on your own exchange calendar as a reminder. So uh, this is a comfortable feel, but specific to the HR categorization um, and specific forms if you want to. You also can tie the candidate. If there was a candidate, I'll show you that on a new hire, they are linked together as well. So let me go ahead and talk about the um, new hire piece of this. So one of the pieces on my portal here says job postings. So um, again, if you're already using another system for the job piece, don't worry about this. Uh, we'd replace it with something else. But in, in ShareWell, um, you have these job postings that have been put in here. And then you have candidates. So the candidate tracker allows you to have a talent pool of people um, and a status of the different candidates. Now a lot of times even people that are using Taleo or other um, uh, recruiting kinds of tools or job tools, still want to use the candidate to get that candidate information into the tool and that record can be used during the uh, new hire process to refer to the information that are, that's specific to them, like their role and their hiring manager, et cetera. So let me go ahead and go into a candidate because we're going to launch from here into the new hire process. So I'm looking at Chuck Santos um, and I have um, at this point, I don't have him in a job yet. He's in a talent pool, and I'm going to go ahead and associate him with a job at this point. So let's, let's associate him with the junior admin job. You can see that there are these fields um, were already part of the map here, the common fields, it's been, and we now have a hiring manager. And this is going to be important in the new hire process because this person is going to own a piece of the overall process. You can track um, the service requests that are created. You can track interviews. And we also have created checklists that um, we've gotten some ideas from our HR customers that are tracked in other spreadsheets. Put them in the tool. And so we have these checklists that can be easily modified. They're not um, specific to this tab either. So just some good handy information to store. I'm not going to go through each one of these phases in detail. But what happens is that you can take a candidate, you have new, you screened them, you have a phone interview, you can do a first round interview, second round interview. And for those of you familiar with ShareWell, again, the configuration of this to remove phases is very easy. 
So if it has too many phases for you, uh, that can easily be modified. Now I've gotten down to the point where Chuck has gone through a reference check and I'm ready to offer him the job. So I'm going to click on uh, Job Offered. It's going to update the job that I have in the system and say that that person has been hired. So um, I now have Job Offered here. Now you can see that I have a Generate HR Request. This is just a one step that's going to initiate the op opening of a service request. If you are coming in from uh, Kronos or from Taleo, you have a candidate already, you know who the hiring manager is, and you want to open up an onboarding request, we can just take, modify this, take the inbound email, uh, or if it was database to database, and initiate the same button that I'm going to check here uh, if it came in from another system. You just wouldn't do the candidate piece of it. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Generate HR Request. Now notice that HR owns this. This can differ by company. Um, with the past two companies we've worked with, uh, they do believe HR does own the overall uh, through, through hiring, through, through the fulfillment, HR owns it. However, there are multiple tasks that are going to be happening throughout here that, uh, that are going to be assigned out to facilities and to other um, organizations. So as you can see, I've got Bruce Robertson came in as the requester. The reason we did this is that if, if you're familiar with the rules on using the portal, when you log in, I can edit my own request. So this is going to give Bruce, the hiring manager, the ability to go through the portal to pick out the specific pieces of IT information that he wants to have for his new hire. Now when this ticket was opened, and it just now populated with the um, automation process, I can see that I have three tasks that were automatically created. Now, those three tasks just represent um, the, the other non-IT types of tasks that happen, have to happen for a new hire. And, and these may be happening in other systems. We have customers who don't want to have, you know, re-key into another. But it's really an advantage to be able to have all of the different pieces of that onboarding in one ticket. It's easy to get a status for it. It's easy to determine what pieces haven't been completed yet. Now you notice that there are no IT uh, requests that are in here at this point. Now Chuck Santos is our, our new hire in this case, and Bruce Robertson is the supervisor. So what happens in the map, and let me just get back over to email here. So I got an email as the hiring manager, and let me pull that up for you. You can see over here that Bruce got a, um, an email saying that Chuck has, has a new hire request has come in for Chuck, and this is your ticket number. And so Chuck is going to go into that ticket from the portal and be able to specify the equipment and the other um, associated items that his new hire is going to need. This is the uh, Enterprise Service Management Hub that we've created. The advantage is that you can have multiple tenants on the same ShareWell implementation and allow each area to have a little different look and feel while still maintaining the corporate skin and theme that you want to have for a place that your end users request assistance. The other advantage is that, you know, from an end user perspective, whether you're asking for something from HR or facilities or IT, frankly, you don't care. You want to be able to go one place and get all of these things taken care of, but you also want to be able to see the overall um, status of all of your different requests. So I'm going to click on My Items and Tickets. Hopefully I'm still logged in. And it's going to allow me to see the different areas that I've already reported tickets against. Give me one second here. I know, I need to log back in. Now, on a, uh, I've already done a, a high-level four-minute overview on the facilities side as well. The facilities is part of the enterprise service management suite that, that we have. 
um, and they have their own different look and feel that's important to them. So here I am. I'm logging in as Bruce, just to remember where we are. I'm the hiring supervisor. I went into my items and tickets, and I can see that I have been a hiring maniac. Uh, I've been responsible for forming this brand new team, and I'm the hiring manager for lots of different people that are coming in here. But I also have other things that I see on this overall service, my overall items. So as a person of this company, I also have um, IT issues that I may have and requests. So I can see all of the things that are HR related, but I can also see that I, the status of my virus issue and I need a requester type, uh, a projector request as well. So here's the new hire request for Chuck Santos that we got the email about that got initiated from Chuck as a candidate. We clicked on the generate new hire. As the hiring manager, I'm in here. I can pull up this new hire request and I am going to edit this. So I see the form and I can see that all of the things uh, that I need to populate are blank, although they're available for me. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this. Well, first of all, I can see that there are three tasks that are already generated. So if you're not putting these extra tabs on your portal so customers can see approvals and tasks, you're missing the boat a little bit. I just learned about this not too long ago, and so I, you can provide a view of right down into the task level for your end users. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this new hire. And uh, I can put in the facility and any other information that's appropriate. For those of you familiar with ShareWell, you will know that these, this is a specific form, that anything on this form is actionable. So if this full-time versus if it's part-time means that something different has to happen in the fulfillment process, this status field can be checked and trigger different activities. Um, if I don't have not listed uh, request new cost center, um, this will actually generate a new task um, that says request cost center. So lots of actions are taking place here now as the supervisor is applying specific um, details to what he wants his person to have. Um, this is populated, these items are in a catalog. We can import that catalog. Um, or you can just populate it yourself, or we can launch out to a catalog as well. This catalog has um, different uh, prices associated. And so for any service request, whether it's a new hire or request a, a phone kind of thing, uh, you can set approvals as part of your workflow. So a common approval is one level up. Uh, my manager always has to approve. Another very common approval is around finances. So if the cost of this overall request is greater than $1,500, let's say, uh, an additional approval can be set to this. In the one step, um, in, in the admin client, uh, if you go in and take a look at it, if you're version 7 or above, this is a one step that is initiating the tasks. And these tasks all say, if this is selected, initiate the task. So I'm only going to have tasks for anything that I picked on this list here. And my list is going to include both uh, IT kinds of things as well as uh, facilities if you want. I'm going to go ahead and just mark this as approved. If this didn't have an approval, it would go out and require a manager approval. I'm going to cheat just a little bit and go ahead and say that it's approved. And let me go ahead and save this. And it takes us back out. So I'm just going to wait for a second for the automation process to run here for Chuck because what's supposed to happen is that now that I have asked for the specific IT task to be generated, those tasks should now be part of this workflow. It might just take a minute here, but I'll check and see. Not yet. So I'll show you one, though, that's already been um, completed and it's already run. And I promise I'll go back to this so you know it's not smoke and mirrors. Um, so this was one for Randy Travis. We hired Randy for a little musical entertainment in our team. And you can see that in addition to the three tasks that were opened when we generated the initial new hire request, 
I now have other specific tasks that are both IT and, and facilities related based on the, the uh, supervisor uh, picking these for their, uh, for their new hire. So let me just take a pause for a second here because I covered a lot of ground and just see if there are any questions on this process in general. Oh, it is there. So there's Chuck's and uh, all of the other additional tasks have been created. And if you, if you have worked with re requests and share well before, you know that tasks are individual pieces of work that are, um, are assigned to different teams to work. And this will show up in their dashboard as an item that, that they need to go look at. And when this facilities person goes into that task, they'll have a view of the overall request as well as the candidate so they can understand a little bit better about um, what they're providing and the location for that. So Mary Lynn, I do have a couple of questions. You may go ahead and ask those to you now or I'll let you keep going. Yeah, that'd be fine. So we're talking about the, the HR case management, and you mentioned earlier that um, we, we made a copy, or let me, before I put words in your mouth, the question is, if the HR case management is using the same object as the incident, so the incident business object we've got in normally mm -hmm. in ShareWell, mm -hmm. uh, how are we keeping data um, separate between those two systems, HR sensitive data compared to incident data? So can you speak to that briefly? Well, they're in the same database. Um, but they are by security group and role. The, um, when people log in, they have access to that or not have access to that. So the, the tenant rules that we have applied here are at a couple of different levels. They're at the level of the, the service category structure. So if I log in as an HR person, I have an HR role. I'm only seeing HR categories, HR dashboards, HR options that go along with that. So an IT person cannot get to um, a case management one unless they have the right role that's provided. And we can provide that down at field level. So in the case of HR, if you're sharing that ticket and an IT person can see that ticket, you can be down at the HR sensitive field level such as social security number or you know phone numbers or whatever and have that field restricted based again on the role and the role would be uh, HR I think our roles at this point are HR caseworker and HR management so a bunch of different different layers we can go to excellent good I'm going to save the other questions Mary Lynn until we get a little closer to the end so keep going okay so um, this is going faster than I thought. This is great. So um, let me stay up here at the portal a little bit. And then you know, as the new hire stuff soaks around a little bit, I'm switching over to the case management and, and providing knowledge up there at the portal um, for another set of HR requirements. But I'll, I'll probably spend about 10 minutes on that max, and then we can bump back over to any um, area that the, the group wants to talk about. So um, again, I'm in as, as uh, a person that is, is, wants to have all of the different options available. I've got HR, I've got facilities. Oh, let me show you something too real quickly. So that's the HR piece. From a facilities perspective, it looks a little bit different, um, but it, uh, it pulls out the categorization structure a little bit differently as well. So um, HR is going to look very different. So, I think most of the people on the phone are uh, existing ShareWell customers. Um, this will sound familiar. If you're not, um, I think you'll catch up really quickly. So we all know that the core, one of the core structures underlying ShareWell is the service catalog. And uh, I, like my, I like a service catalog. I'm a huge proponent of, of what it does for you, but I do not like how the dynamic catalogs are, are rendered in the self-service portal out of the box. Um, the great news is they are dynamic, and the way that you modify that catalog is truly through table. It's not even going into the big admin client to do it. It's a table where you just add entries, um, and it can be pushed out. That, that modification and the maintenance of that can be pushed out. The challenge that a lot of our customers have 
is in the rendering of the portal. So this is the out-of-box rendering of the portal. Um, I think this is a 702 one. Eight looks uh, pretty similar to it. Um, it got away from, if you're on an older version of, of five and six, the out-of-box one is not those, um, I really dislike the boxes. You know, the blue boxes where you hover over and it sort of turns green. So the rendering of the service catalog is something that I think is um, a challenge for a lot of customers. And, and hopefully when I go through what we've done with HR, it'll give you some ideas on how that can be extended as well. So, uh, you know, you're an end user coming in here, and uh, the word I use for this is meander. You're having to meander through here. I don't like how it left off, it, it orphaned, it orphaned this service and this final subcategory up here. But I honestly don't believe that the other out-of-box options for rendering the catalog are appealing at all either. And, and uh, you know, I think I would hear a, a few um, applauses if we were not muted at this point. But you gotta have the structure, and the structure is so very powerful because it's what drives your assignment and it's what drives your specific forms. So um, you, you have to use it, and you want to use it, and it's great for reporting. But to have somebody come in here, and let's say they're an HR, they will have an HR question, they're having to go down through here, and they say, oh, here's my HR stuff, and then here are all of the different things. Well, there's a, that's a pretty good selection of HR kinds of things. We took this, uh, did some of these ideas from the last two customers that we've worked with um, as their common areas for HR. This is a little difficult to maneuver. So um, what we've done, and, and this is a continuing theme with most of our other portal designs, is that we've pulled this out. And there are a couple of different um, um, areas that we absolutely believe in. Um, first of all, you've got an announcement area here. We've modified in this map uh, so that there can, it's tenant-based. So you can have, uh, when you go into the discussion records, uh, if you're familiar with the discussion table, uh, you will pick a tenant for who that announcement is applicable to. So in, in this map, we have uh, an HR tenant, a facilities tenant, and an IT tenant. And you can extend that easily. And we've also added an expiration date so that the announcement can, would no longer be shown um, after that last date. But as you can see, when I went into the human resources area, this does not look anything like the service catalog. But it is. It is the service catalog. I mean, if you look back at, this, at what I was showing you for in the service catalog, these are uh, the cat, most of the categories, but not all of them. So what our customers are doing, um, are, are they're doing a review of what are the most common kinds of requests that come into the service desk. And what a lot of companies are finding is that about 75% of the issues and requests that come in from the end user um, can fall in uh, potentially 10 or 12 different boxes. So um, what we encourage people to do is put those up here on the portal um, in big pretty le letters that are easy to click and easy to find. And these are the most common ones uh, for our current HR customers. Now, if you can't find what you want, you need a bailout. But when we give a bailout, and I'll show you this in a second, we bail only to the HR portion of the service catalog. So when we click into benefits, what we have here are subcategories. But guess what? These are not the actual names, in some cases, of the subcategories. Because when you don't use the dynamic view of the catalog, you can name this anything you want. And what happens underneath um, is a one step that simply maps. So it says, whenever I click on benefits enrollment, that services benefits, the category is medical, dental, vision, um, and my subcategory might be something called uh, enrollment but we, we made, it, made it look a lot nicer here. Now, from a maintenance perspective, when I first started talking to customers about it this past summer, um, getting away from the dynamic one, uh, it, at first I was not a proponent of this because I would say, well, but it's not dynamic. 
you're, you're going to have to um, put one steps underneath all of these things. As I started going out to customers, I found out that almost all of them could care less about the fact that you just have to add a little one step here. Once you solidify your service catalog, it's not going to change that much. And the benefit of being able to render your services, categories, and subcategories in an eye-appealing um, uh, structure and format that you want to do makes this really pretty easy. I mean, clicking on, a, a bene clicking on the one step to go with this is probably a two-minute process. What we did in the HR side, which is different than the portal on the IT side, is that you expect that people are wanting answers up here. Um, and you quickly need to get them to the right area. So uh, in this case, what, we're, what we are able to demonstrate, and, um, and, and this was based on a proof of concept that we did for a customer uh, that had a knowledge base that we needed to sort of replicate. But what we found was that knowledge, and I'm using knowledge with air quotes around it, that knowledge is really in multiple sources. It's never just in one. And you know, we went into this thinking, well, they're going to have to put all their stuff into the Sharewell Knowledge Management System. No way. So um, what we did in this POC, which was uh, revealing for us that you can do this pretty easily, is that um, you know, from, a, from an HR perspective, um, your knowledge is in three different places. Your knowledge is external your knowledge is on a shared source, or you may have the tribal knowledge that you want to store within ShareWell. So here's an example when I click on this. I clicked on Benefits Enrollment. Here at Advanced Marketplace, our um, benefits are maintained by an external customer, Oasis. And so in this case, I went from my corporate site that said Benefits, and it took me to the Outsource site. And depending on uh, what you have set up with your outsource areas, and if you have single sign-on enabled, you could potentially even log them right into this system. So that's just an example of the knowledge that somebody needs or the, the, the destination that they need to get to being available with a click out here instead of it, it opening up a ticket. Another example, enrolling in 401k. Now here's an example where the knowledge articles are maintained in ShareWell. If you don't have a common repository somewhere that you want to link out to, you can store them in ShareWell. And um, in this case, it'll pull up your document uh, that's maintained in the um, document manager uh, and is provided and they can download it or do whatever they need to do at this point with it. So that's another uh, way of providing that knowledge. And then a third way is to, to go out to a shared site. So um, in this case, I'm going to um, a, a place that's holding the data. So a lot of you may use SharePoint or shared folders. Um, ShareWell is not a document management system. I mean, it doesn't do that check-in and check-out and version control. It's a great place to store docs if you want to use them across multiple knowledge articles, but a lot of people have these in, in common repositories, so you can link out to those. So if you haven't tried this yet in your ShareWell system, and HR was a perfect way for us to try this out, you can launch out, to, launch out from your subcategory level, you can pull up docs, and you can also go into the knowledge side of things as well. Now, if you're in here and you haven't found what you're looking for, I think that's a song, um, I'm going to go ahead and click on Submit an HR Request. So this is the bailout. I, I didn't find the knowledge that I wanted. You provided me with lots of different places to go and look, and I just can't find it. Um, the other thing you can do is um, up here, uh, I only have charts and items, but I can also have documents up here that link out to a shared site. Um, what we've done here is we take, uh, you have the ability to easily identify something as a quick case in your system. And let's say that um, you know, you're in the enrollment period and the 15, 15 questions are all the same came in in the last 10 minutes. You can quickly put them up as a quick case selection where it's going to provide the knowledge article that they want that, that is useful for that. So it's just another way to quickly get them instead of having to open a ticket 
get the information to them. You can also search your, um, your knowledge, your ShareWell knowledge base. If that fails, I hit Ask HR. Now here's that same service catalog. I'm still not thrilled with the way it looks. Uh, I got an orphan here. Um, but what it does is it does at least segment this to the HR service and gives a, a shorter view. Almost all of these, though, are represented by those links that were back underneath you know, benefits and um, life events. So um, this is, I also wanted to show you that from here I can also open up an onboarding. I'm not taking the, the onboarding away. You don't have to pick one way. Oh my gosh, my HR people are not the ones that do onboard initiation. I can do this in here as a, as a, supervis uh, as a supervising manager. So you still have the ability to uh, provide the onboard form and the onboarding workflow if you decide that you want to initiate onboarding uh, as an, from the end user portal instead of from HR. Okay. So uh, I've covered the, the knowledge way to get knowledge to people for HR. Um, we can uh, open up a ticket and that goes into the case management system. I'm looking at my uh, different cases that I have open here. Let's uh, sort these a little bit. Here's one that I had open the other day. <clears throat> I'm tr I can track my journal notes back and forth. So in this case, the technician, who's Henry, uh, sent back uh, information to Bruce that he can see up here on the portal with the objective always being that, that they don't have to call back in for status, which is just a, drains the resources of any of the service desks. So lots of information that they've provided up here as well. Okay, so wow, I, um, I feel like I sped through that so we could get through everything and now we have some additional time. So um, what kinds of questions do you have around the um, HR process? Um, or the or the portal or the the knowledge side. So, uh, Mary, I'm going to ask you. Got quite a few questions here. Uh, okay. And just as a reminder uh, for those of y'all that have uh, attended today's webinar, you can ask questions down in the bottom left-hand corner. Just direct those specifically to Matthew Peoples. I'll bring them up to Marilyn as we go through this. Uh, Marilyn, it's the first time we've ever had this question. Uh, how many people are actually in attendance with us today? So I'm looking, looks like we've got 36 people on the webinar today. I thought that was a, a funny question. So we've got. Uh, but now you're going to make me nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good group of people on today's call, uh, and we've had some good interactions with questions. Uh, so I saw this question two different times. Uh, in reference to HR, you've talked about Social Security numbers, you've talked about things that obviously are. Uh, confidential and, and secure, or at least should be. So HIPAA came up in a couple of different ways in questions. So can you speak to HIPAA compliance, and for those of you all that may not recognize HIPAA, uh, HIPAA is what manages uh, patient information or uh, Social Security numbers to make sure that those aren't just laying around on somebody's desk for anyone to easily see. So Marilyn, is there with ShareWell or this HR piece, is HIPAA coming to play in any of this? You know, we're, I'm going to have to do a follow-up on that because I know that both 508 compliancy and HIPAA, HIPAA compliancy are on the, um, the short-term roadmap uh, for ShareWell. From a, from a data protection perspective, the, um, you absolutely can um, protect any field down at a field, I mean, any, anything down at a field level that's secured by uh, security groups and roles. So the actual wraparound, though, for the if, for HIPAA compliance, if we can take that as a follow-up, I'd like to do that as more as a more robust response. Excellent. I think this question uh, plays into that same statement that you just made about uh, field-level security. So can you mask a candidate's name or just information if you don't want to put their location or where they're at, but you need to hide, or maybe you need to hide their name or their last name? Uh, speak again, just to be sure that that's answered. At a field level, we can any we can, of those things, any okay. of them. So usually, um, you, now if you're not talking HR, usually um, being able to segment by role and uh, by service and things like that are are good enough. 
But in the case of HR, where the tickets may need to be shared, it's absolutely critical that those get down at the, at the field level. And, and ShareWell provides that capability to either hide fields, make them only, um, or, or maybe you only want to mask and see the last four of social, but the, the record has all of them. Um, all of those things can happen, and the only way you would see them is if you have a specific role. Good. So, Marilyn, this comes back to the Taleo uh, comments from earlier. Uh, Brent's asking about uh, with this solution, I know that you really probably piqued the interest of a lot of people because we always get this question. Are you saying that they could, if they did not want to use Taleo, they could use this system completely standalone and not necessarily use a uh, requirement job requirement tracking piece or they could use one piece or the other? So go back and just kind of talk about that again about the Taleo. Yeah, yeah right. because I'll, I want to be really honest too with the piece, with one of the pieces that's not here yet, and it's it's something that we are actively working on. Um, so if you want to use the job tracker component and the candidate component, they are part of this now. If you don't, we just wouldn't put them in the map. Um, and the the so you would take a job right from the from the very beginning. Um, as new and take it through all of the different phases that it would go through. Now, the piece that is not part of this that um, we've been asked about a lot is, is posting them uh, to a website and having candidates apply through that website. And that part is not here right now. We can take an inbound email and, um, and Oh, create a new candidate from that with all of the information in the email if it's a structured email, but we don't have the um, application process um, on the portal at this time. So this would start from uh, a job being created, candidates being uh, identified, and then kicking off the new hire process. Okay, good, good, good comment. And so this goes back to another uh, question of integration. If they have tools, and then we can seem to pick on Taleo uh, pretty regular here. So if they are having an external tool that's doing this, and they want to be able to interface with those tools, one of the questions was about if if the other system can send an email, could Sharewell read that email and update HR with some data? Another person is asking about you know what what level of integration is there? Can you speak briefly to what we could do from an integration with these third-party HR tools that are already out there? Yeah, it, and it's it's really um, pretty simple. It's it's the the two ways you can do the web API. Um, we most people don't bother going that direction. What we're doing with um, with uh, Kronos, our, our most recent one, we're going to do uh, database to database in that case. And what we've done for another customer, I can't remember what tool they had. It, theirs was initiated by an email. But whether it's database to database or formatted email. We can do bi-directional information exchange you know, coming from, let's say, Kronos to or Taleo in to generate the, uh, the request. And then if Taleo wants some sort of information back, at least the ticket number that was created and when the final task was finished, or maybe they'd actually need to know some more information that's part of that request, um, that can be sent back over either the database to database way or via, um, via email. To update, so you know the, the challenge is always that other side. Um, I, I may sound a little biased; it's never Sharewell's fault. But um, you know the example that we're working on with Kronos is that they, Kronos is not allowing us to write to them uh, directly. They do not want updates from another system, and so in that case, what we're doing is we're using a staging table that it goes into, um, and we're posting the. Um, the updates into it, or they're, they're sending it back down and we're sending the updates back into a staging table for them. So um, the integration is really the easiest part of this um, with, with the bi-directional capabilities. Mary Lynn, I have 18 more questions <laughs> and they continue to keep coming in. So uh, okay. some of these I can I'll, answer. I'll make shorter answers. <laughs> Uh, some of these I can answer uh, quickly. Uh, was this recorded? Normally I say that in the beginning that we're recording it. So yes, uh, today's session has been recorded. If you want a copy of the recording, you can email consulting at ampemail.com. 
and we can give you a link to the recording uh, as well. Uh, so we've got a version question, is what version was this built to support? And then separate question, which all this ties together. I'm moving to version 8, would this work with version 8? I'm on version 5, would it work on 5? So speak briefly, Mary Lynn, to the versions that these things reside on and what they support. It was, it was built on 7, um, which is where the uh, candidate tracker and job tracker, they may have been, been on 6 as well, but we built this on 702, um, and we've upgraded it. Uh, this that I'm showing you here is a 702 upgraded to 801. So if you're on six, uh, if you're on six, you got to get up to you, just for your own good. You need to get up to eight if you can. There's so many new enhancements in eight, along with the orchestration um, that that's available now and the improvements in the browser. But um, this map could be put onto a seven system or an eight system safely at this point. Uh, so Marilyn, this ties back into licensing. Um, do they have to go to Sharewell to get this? Did they come to us to get it? And, and do they have to buy a license to do this? So I can answer some of those types of questions. Right, this is a an AMP solution that we built on top of Sharewell. Uh, it does not require any additional licensing from Sharewell, unless the fact that you're using it requires additional users into the system. The beauty of Sharewell is you really are buying access to their platform. They've got a really great help desk tool on their platform, and that's what most people buy it for. But any of these other solutions, whether it's this HR solution or our facilities, it's really a matter of users accessing the environment, not so much a license that you have to buy from Sharewell to make these things uh, work. I think I answered all of the licensing part. Uh, so Marilyn, you can answer this one. I, I know that Sharewell, I saw this actually on their website today, 70% of their customers are doing some level of beyond IT. And the question got asked to us, right, you built this off of user requirements, so it's obvious you've got customers interested in this. Uh, how many of our customers are doing some level of beyond IT? So can you take just 30 seconds and speak to them? Uh, the beyond IT piece is, is uh, big and little. So we have a lot of people, I would say that almost all of our customers are doing beyond IT, but the gradients are, are you know, are, are small, uh, small, middle, and big. So uh, facilities and HR, that's why we built this enterprise service management platform. HR and facilities are just arm in arm with the IT one for probably at least half of our customers. And then when you say it beyond IT, because of this platform and the fact that it doesn't in interfere with upgrades, there are a lot of people that are just creating their own things on here. I mean, at, from an advanced marketplace perspective, this is where we do our project, our, um, our professional services project tracking. This is where we report time um, against the milestones of our projects. This is where our consultants enter their time and enter their expenses. Um, and customers are extending this. Uh, I don't, I don't know if I have it in this one at this point, but every time I go out to ShareWell, I see them extending it also with maps. I just loaded up a training map um, the other day um, from ShareWell that allows me to track training classes and the enrollment and training classes. And there's a, a CI Loan M app that I just happened upon the other day as well that lets me mark configuration items as loanable and from an incident go ahead and loan that out. So I would say about 75% are doing something, about 50% are doing significant like HR and facilities. Yeah, good answer. Um, so uh, Marilyn, this is talking about customizations. If somebody's using this HR solution that we've built, how customizable uh, is this? And Tina, this is a couple of your questions kind of combined together, so let me know if Marilyn doesn't completely answer this. So if they're using this solution and they want to make a customization to the forms, they want to edit the, the workflow, how is that possible? Do they do they need us to come in and do that for them again because we built this, or are they capable of doing it on their own? No, they, they, this is all just general configuration. I mean, if you've been able to set up uh, your portal, or not even your portal, because we can help a little bit with that. If if you have service requests that are happening out there right now, um, and know how to do tasks, um, know how to update your service catalog, um, you can. I mean, this is just a dashboard here. I don't mean to minimize this. I mean, it did take us a little bit to put it together, but a lot of that was pulling together the requirements. The configuration on this is just like, just like you would modify an incident or a service request. There's nothing special. 
Uh, so Marilyn, we've got multiple, and we've got five minutes. We've got to wrap up the call right at two o'clock today. Uh, we've got multiple people asking for things like go back and show me more around uh, the work order uh, piece, or or could you get a little deeper into the new hire, click some more buttons. We're not going to have time to do that today, but if anyone's wanting to see a deeper dive into this, uh, feel free to email consulting at ampemail.com, and we can easily set up a one-on-one -on -one session where you can ask all your own questions and, and drive what we're looking at as we go through that. Uh, so Mary Lynn, we got another. Uh, so you talked a little bit about uh, document and that we really are not a document repository, mm -hmm. but this question is more along a line of templates. So does Sharewell offer document templates that incorporate the candidate's information like email, name? And I'm assuming this question is, is we're adding somebody new to the system. And is there a template that's already in the system that asks all the right information that's important to HR? So if I'm adding a new user, right? If I'm going back, go back to your your candidate track, and I got a new candidate, and I want to make sure there's 10 fields of data that's important to the HR department for a new candidate. Mm -hmm. Yes, here we go. So this screen here, right? If if we wanted to also add something, how many children do they have, or something along those lines? If we want to modify that, yeah, we we can do that, correct? Oh yeah, you can add anything you want here, get rid of anything, adding fields or a piece of cake. And one of the special things we have in this map. This looks like just dumb old check, checklists. Well, because every single customer we go to wants a different checklist, we've made these so that they're, own, they're their own little supporting object um, and can easily be modified and then applied to the candidate form so that you can have you know, 50 checklists if you want. Uh, so Mary Lynn, let me run through a couple more of these. Uh, so we got uh, two questions on, all right, so we're using this solution. Are we calling ShareWell for support, or who, who provides support to answer the solution. So speak briefly to helping somebody well, get it up there, and going. There's and nothing in here that isn't, um, isn't ShareWell. I mean, this is absolutely their forms, their, the database. The, it's the same as any M app that you would, um, that you would load up. There's nothing special. <laughs> it makes it sound, sound easy, but I mean, it, there's nothing special uh, or, or proprietary that AMP has done in here that somebody from um, ShareWell support would not uh, would not answer. Uh, so this next question, you you kind of went there a moment ago with it sounded like you were talking about uh, new students coming in. Uh, we the question was asked earlier from one of the universities on the call is could we take this instead of doing a job applicant of someone hiring, could we do this for student admissions if we if they want to take this and modify this completely away from HR, right. but but do something that handles you know students coming into the school, is that doable? Oh yeah, I mean it's the same. It's the same idea, and you're able. You need to have those students at different statuses, and in a way, they're a candidate for the school, right? And so the statuses, it might not be job offered, but it may be admissions offered, and be able to track that status of that student, and then keep the collateral um, that's associated with it all in one location. It would not be a stretch to take this candidate. Um, candidate model into a, uh, a student enrollment model. Uh, so as the IT components are filled out with data and that resides in an inventory area, uh, can that be accessed by the help desk when the employee has a help desk request? So this goes back to um, they're doing all the, we're doing all this stuff in HR. Right. Does the IT department have access to this data to, to now start working with them now that they're an employee? Uh, there's an assumption in there that when you do the um, when you um, fulfill a new hire request, <clears throat> let me see if this one is here. Um, the answer is yes, but you have to do a little bit to do it. So in these tasks here, when somebody gets a, uh, a, a order a computer and then configure the computer, if you're not bringing in that person as part of your FCCM integration or your Sharewell ESM integration then whoever configures this computer um, needs to make sure that that computer gets added to the CMDB and the person needs to be added to that as well. Now, one step could be created behind the scenes to do that, and a lot of, config a lot of the, the discovery tools will bring in that information with it, but um, it, it depends on what's being captured, and if it's not being captured, it either needs to be a one step or it needs to be manually done. Very good. Well, Marilyn, we've got additional questions, but we're up against the 2 o'clock hour. So 
I will address each of these questions back to the individuals that's asked them. Uh, I'll follow up with you after this. Uh, I've got your email account. Thank you everyone for participating in today's uh, HR Solution webinar. Again, if you've got questions or want to see a deep dive, feel free to email consulting at ampemail.com and we can easily schedule that and show you the solution. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.